Good morning. Um, today we are going to be covering elves in my series covering my commander decks. Um, if you are just joining me with this series, um, I will give a brief explanation now. Um, basically, I am <coughs> sort of cataloging uh, all of my various commander decks and um, sort of ranking them um, as they progress along the unofficial power scale when it comes to Commander. Um, so, with that being said, we have already covered my worst deck, Devils. The next worst, Soldiers. Uh, the next worst after that, Goblins. Um, and then probably the mid-tier, starting with Merfolk. Why did I say that so weird? Merfolk. Um, and then last episode, we covered the Precon Quandrix deck that I have somewhat upgraded. Um, I think the other thing is it really depends on your playgroup. Um, for what... I like to accomplish and the kind of game style that I like to play, that's how I'm, I'm ranking these, of like how efficient it allows me to do what I like to do. Um, obviously, any of these decks could be very easily upgraded by just throwing in some tutors and an infinite combo, but uh, I don't like infinite combos, in fact I actually would say I hate them. I think they actively um, harm the state of the game, and I think that the fact that they are not like actively being banned until they become problematic or toxic within the meta is bad game management, honestly. Um, I think there should be alternative win cons, absolutely. You know, like a, like a Thassa's Oracle kind of thing, or a Biomancer kind of thing, or, you know, the advisors getting a bunch of those out or whatever. Um, <clears throat> definitely alternate win cons. I mean, even, even one of my decks has Liliana's Contract as a win con. Um, it's not the primary win con, but it's there as a backup plan if shit goes south. Um... But, anywho, yeah. Sorry, this hair is bugging me. Um, so, this is Elf Deck today. Um, double loader, because uh, I did end up um, double sleeving this deck, and it just doesn't quite fit in the old regular flip box, so it gets a double. Um, first up, and most importantly, we have Lathral, Blade of the Elves. Quite possibly the best elf commander anyone could hope to have. It's... Oops, sorry. It's honestly shocking to me that, uh, this card was even printed because it kind of just invalidated any other choice. Um, I think the yeah. only other reason you would choose a different elf commander is if you did not want to splash black. If you wanted to go mono green, you would have to choose something else. Um, so I guess there's some argument to be made there. Alright, we're just going to get into it. You all ready? Okay, good morning, and here we go. Uh, Numa, Duraga, Chieftain. He's a 3-drop green, legendary creature elf warrior, with 2-2, two, two, and at the beginning of combat, on your turn, you may pay XX. When you do, distribute X-1-1 counters among any number of target elves. It also has partner, so you can have two commanders if you have that and another card with partner. 
Soul Ring, you know what it do, baby. Uh, uh, command Tower. Add one mana of any color that your commander's color identity could make. Dwinin, Gilleaf Dane. Uh, four drop green. Gilleaf Dane, actually. Not Dean. A legendary elf warrior creature. Um, three four with reach. Other elf creatures you control get plus one plus one, so it's a lord. Whenever Dwine and Guilt Leaf Dane attacks, you gain one life for each attacking elf you control. So, pretty good. Uh, Cage Sun. Gotta have Cage Sun in any deck that runs a primary color. So, like, obviously, this is a green black deck. I do have black spells in here. But, functionally, this deck is mostly green. Like, it's probably like an 80 20 split. Um,. Not literally, but somewhere along those lines. Uh, Jacket Scar Archers. Uh, three drop green. Three drop two green. Uh, elf Archer. Power and toughness is equal to the number of elves you control. And tap to deal damage equal to power to target creature with flying. This card is very underrated. Um, I see a lot of people, like, taking it out of the 100, or the, or taking it out of the 99, or taking it out of their, even their 60s, when we get down to modern. I keep this in modern. I main board it. Because elves don't have a lot of reach. You know, like, elves have more reach than a lot of other archetypes, but flyers are still a big problem. And especially, like, when you're trying to go fast, and other people are trying to go fast, but they have evasion, You've got to do something about that evasion because that that evasion is their one up on you. So you have to do something about it, uh, or you just have to go faster, honestly. Um, but it's they're probably always going to go faster than you if they can do their damage without getting blocked. Um, so uh, the other thing is this pairs really really nicely with uh, Great Bow Doyen, I think is his name. Uh, Great Bodoyan states that anytime you deal damage to a flyer, you also deal that damage to the controller of that flyer. That becomes a very powerful threat if you have Jagged Scar Archers, because then, as soon as they put out a flyer, or they're probably not going to put out a flyer, honestly, but if they do, if they make that mistake, you're going to be sending the entire power of Jagged Scar Archers to kill that flyer and to deal direct damage to the face. It's a huge punishment for playing flyers, which is something a lot of people like think is a no-brainer. Like obviously play flyers, like just get evasion, win game. Pretty easy. Anywho, side tangent aside, um, a ley line of abundance, four drop double green. Um, I don't have ley line in every deck uh, because not all of them are that good. But this one works well with this particular deck. Um, it's an enchantment. If Leyline of Abundance is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield. That's always nice. Um, whenever you tap a creature for mana, add an additional green. There's a lot of dorks and elves. There's a lot of dorks and elves. And I'm running a lot of them. Oh. Um, Pay eight, including two green. Put a wall encounter on each creature you control. You're gonna have mana out the butt with elves. Or you should if you're running it right, or if it's working right. <laughs> so having something to dump that mana into is not a bad thing, and one one counters are always great. Uh, Reclamation Sage, three drop green elf shaman to one, two one. Uh, one Reclamation Sage enters the battlefield, destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Good utility. Sylvan Messenger. We've got that seemingly new updated art. I think that's new art. Uh, four drop green elf, 2-2, two, two, with trample. Enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all elf creatures revealed this way into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in order. Uh, the fact that it's honestly 
like has trample is already good, and then does what it does. Uh, Land of War Wastes. This is just the Abomaya Coasts for green black. Uh, deals damage to you if you tap it for a color, but otherwise, it just taps for one. Of an ambush, four drop green. This is the commander, ex one of the commander exclusive cards. Uh, it's an instant speed, creates one one green elf or your creature tokens for each elf you control. This is an instant speed elvish promenade. And they just they just went ahead and printed it. Like I don't even know what to say about that. It's an incredibly powerful spell. Possibly one of the most powerful elf spells. <coughs> uh, poison tip archer, four drop green black, elf archer, uh, two three, reach and death touch whenever another creature dies, each opponent loses one life. Very powerful in commander, because it does stay each opponent. And on top of that, um, you're going to have a lot of elves, so there's going to be a lot of chance of them dying, because your opponent's going to need them to die. Um, and that's going to really, like, punish a board bribe if that happens. Um, four drop, two green, Tyvar Kel. He is a legendary planeswalker, Tyvar. Begins with three loyalty counters, and as a passive, he states any elf you control has tap to add black. His plus one is put a 1-1 one -one counter on up to one target elf, untap it, it gains death touch until end of turn. His zero is to create an elf warrior creature token, and his minus six is get an emblem with whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste until the end of turn, and you draw two cards. His emblem might not seem like a big deal, but Elves with Haste is OP. If you can find a way to give Elves haste. Sorry. That's... If they ever print that, like, Elves is gonna go up, like, up the tiers, up the prices, it's gonna go up. I'm just saying. I'm stating that as a prediction now. If they ever give elves a definitive, easy, low-cost way to give haste in green, mono green, let's say, elves are gonna go up. Abomination of Lanamore. It is a three-drop green-black. Um, legendary creature elf horror. Vigilance and Menace, Abomination of Land of War's power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves you control, plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. This one's particularly nasty, because it gets hit by Coco. So, you can just drop this fucker in at instant speed, sometimes. I mean, obviously, you can't predict that you're gonna drop it in at instant speed, but I've done it before. <laughs> Um, Elvish Warmaster, uh, two drop green, Elf Warrior 2-2, two, two. uh, whenever one or more elf, other elf enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green Elf Warrior creature token, do this only once per turn. Um, and then you can pay seven, including two green, elves get plus two plus two, gain death touch until end of turn. Um, that's cool. But you should probably have Azuri on the field or something and use his dump ability rather than that one. I'm just saying. Uh, Elvish Harbinger. Three drop green. Elf Druid with one two. Um, Elvish Harbinger come into play. Search your library for an elf. Reveal it. Shuffle your library. Put it on top. You can also tap to add mana of any color. Pretty good card. Let you go hunt for an elf in Commander, which is really good. Because otherwise you're just going to be filtering for days. Um, <clears throat> Listen a lot of Hunt Master. 4 drop double green, Elf Warrior 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast an elf spell, you may create a green Elf Warrior creature token. 1-1. One, one. Um, Kind of just a better version of the War Master. 
because you're not limited by one per turn. Elven Bow. One drop green, artifact equipment. When Elven Bow enters the battlefield, you may pay two. If you do, create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token, then attach Elven Bow to it. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus two, and has reach with equip three. Um, you might think that's kind of a weak spell to have in a commander deck, but to kind of have the ability to always have reach on deck, well, not always, but to have reach on something other than the body of a creature that is so easily targeted, so easily destroyed in a game of commander with board wipes, um, I think it's really important. I think it's almost vital, because reach is very necessary in not just commander, but pretty much all game types. You, you gotta stop those flyers. Um, collect a company. Uh, four drop green, instant. Look at the top six of your library. Put up to two creature cards um, with converter making it cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in order. Incredibly powerful spell. Um, I underestimated the hell out of this spell for a number of years. Until I finally just like woke up one day and realized just how fucking good it was. Um, back when I had a modern, when I had a modern uh, elf deck, I used to run uh, four of those, and it was necessary. Uh, Emerald medallion, two drop artifact, green spells cost one less. Putrefy, three drop green black, instant speed, destroy target artifact or creature. Can't be regenerated. Nyx Lotus. Four drop, legendary artifact. Enter the battlefield tap, choose a color, add amount of mana of that color equal to your devotion to that color. Pretty powerful. Uh, Casualties of War. Um, this is a six drop, two green, two black. Choose one or more. Destroy target artifact, destroy target creature, destroy target enchantment. Destroy target land, destroy target planeswalker. Uh, when it says choose one or more, that means you can have them all. So that's why the cost is so high. You can do all of these. Like if you have valid targets for all of these, you can do all of these. So please do. <laughs> um, do not play this spell just to kill a creature or just to kill an artifact. Like unless it's going to be necessary for you to save the game. Well, we sure. Two drop green. Elf. 1-1. One, one. Tap to gain one life for each elf on the battlefield. Yes, that's on the battlefield, not just on your side of the battlefield. So keep that in mind. Imperius Perfect. Three drop green. 2-2. Two, two. Elf Warrior. Other elves you control. Get plus one. Plus one. So this is a lord. Um, pay one green and tap. Create a one one green elf warrior creature token. One of my favorite elves, Jiraga Warcaller. We've got that old Zendikar promo. He is one green elf warrior one one, and with a multi kicker, pay one and a green. Um, Draga Warcaller enters the battlefield with a 1 1 counter on it for each time it was kicked. Other elf creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1 for each 1 1 counter on Draga Warcaller. This is very important because, as you can guess, his kicker is not the only way to get 1 1 counters on him. And we're going to have a, a few different ways to get 1 1 counters on him. So, you got to pay attention to that because. He can, he can end a game real quick. Uh, the other thing is, we have a lot of mana to jump in this game. So, because of playing elves and the dorks and all that. So, I mean, if you dump 20 mana into him, he, he drops with 10 one one counters. Every elf you have just got plus 10, plus 10. Like, those are, those are all drowsy numbers, son. That's game winning shit. Firewood Channeler. 4 drop green. Elf Druid. 2-2. Two, two. Tap to add X mana of any color, any one color, where X is the number of elves on the battlefield. 
Land of War Tribe, 3 drop green, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, Elf Druid, tap to add 3 green. I hate this card. I hate having this card played against me, but this card is very powerful and very annoying. The Ruthless Winnower, 5 drop double black, Elf Rogue, 4-4, four, four. at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player sacrifices a non-elf. It's a very crafty way to keep your opponents from having creatures. <clears throat> but Elf is also a very wide archetype. There's a lot of decks that are going to have Elves on accident. One of my absolute favorite Elves, and one of my absolute favorite Magic cards, uh, Steel Leaf Champion, the Thick Boy. Uh, three green Elf Knight, uh, five four. He cannot be blocked by creatures with power two or less. That's honestly insane. How quickly you can get him out, how early he can get out with a body of five. Can't be blocked unless you have creatures with two or less. Or unless you have creatures with three or more. So, yeah, he's, he's fucking great. Uh, I used to run him in my modern deck which a lot of people thought was nuts, but I want games with him. I want lots of games with him. He's, he's a fucking beast. He does the work. You know, he, you get him, you can get him out turn two with a Llanowar Elf, and then turn three, you're swinging five. That's a quarter of their life on turn three. You can probably swing more than that if you've got lords and shit, so. Yeah, but that's modern. We don't play modern anymore. We're all grown now. Elvish Arch Druid, three drop double green. Elf Druid, two two. Other elf creatures you control get plus one plus one. So this is a lord. Um, and add one green for each elf you control. Azuri, Renegade Leader, three drop double green. Legendary creature, Elf Warrior, two two. Uh, pay green, regenerate another elf that you control. Um, actually, no. Target elf. It could even be an elf that someone else controls if you really want it to be. Um, and then you can pay five, including three green. Elf creatures you control get three, three, and trample until the end of turn. And that doesn't have to require him to tap, so you can pay that multiple times if you have the mana. Azuri is more than likely the elf spell that has gotten the most wins for elves collectively like he is responsible for the most wins throughout magic history i would guess maybe shaman of the pack maybe kind of a stretch i think azuri is probably the one that's pulling out more though um guilt leaf palace uh it's a land Comes into play, you may reveal an elf from your hand. If you don't, Gilly Palace enters tap. Tap for a black or a green. This card's getting kind of spandy, but I got it cheap. Uh, Wirewood Lodge. Um, tap to add one to your mana pool. And then more importantly, pay a green. Tap to untap target elf. That's going to be nuts. You're going to do nasty things with that. Uh, Path of Ancestry. Enters the battlefield. Tap to add one mana of any commander color, any color in your commander color's identity. When that mana is spent to cast a creature that shares a type with that commander, scry one. Horn Reef the Vastwood. Enters the battlefield tapped. Tap to add green to your mana pool. Or tap to put 1 1 counters on each green creature to enter the battlefield this turn. Hitting a land pocket. Uh, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, Legendary Land. Tap to add one mana to your mana pool, or pay two, choose a color, add to your mana pool an amount of that color equal to your devotion to that color. <laughs> Whirlwind, four drop double green, sorcery, destroy all creatures with flying. Is that necessary in this deck? Mm, probably not, but fuck flyers. Dragons, demons, angels, get them out of here. Scoot. 
Uh, Kindred Summoning, or Summons. Uh, seven drop, double green, instant. Choose a creature type. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X creature cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control of that type. Put those cards on the battlefield, then shuffle your rest, the rest of your of the revealed cards into your library. I don't know if you understand how elves work, but at this point, you should. You get lots of elves on the field, and then you do stupid stuff with the elves. So if you get lots of elves on the field, and that somehow isn't enough, and you play this spell, now you just get all the elves. Every one of them. Damn near, anyways. Um, so yeah, that's a fucking goofy card. Uh, binding of the Old Gods. Or binding the Old Gods. Um, four drop X. X? Four drop black green. Uh, it's a saga. <laughs> so, phase one of the saga is destroy target non lane permanent and opponent controls. Phase two is search your library for a forest, put it on the battlefield tap, shuffle your library. And phase three is creatures you control gain death touch till end of turn. Not bad. Beast Whisperer, 4 drop double green, Elf, Druid, 2 3. Whenever you cre cast a creature spell, draw a card. It's gonna really help us filter through our deck. Eye Blight Massacre, 4 drop double black, and Sorcery, non elf creatures you control, get 2 2 until end of turn. Actually, it's not even you control. Uh, that's just a nice way to um, get rid of some of the peskier tokens, basically. Elves Promenade! <laughs> Compose. Uh, four drop green tribal sorcery elf, which means you can hunt for this with Harbinger. Um, create a 1-1 one, one green elf where your creature token for each elf you control. Gross. Obelisk of Erd, six drop artifact with Convoke. Enter the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you control of that chosen type get plus two, plus two. Marwin the Nurturer, we've got that game day promo. Uh, three drop green, legendary creature, elf druid, actually it's pre-release promo, I'm sorry. Um, one one, whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, put a one one counter on Marwin the Nurturer. Add an amount of green equal to Marwin's power. Very powerful spell. Uh, Guilt Leaf Ambush. Three drop green tribal instant elf. Put two 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens into play. Clash with an opponent. If you win, those creatures gain death touch until end of turn. In order to clash, each clashing player reveals the top card of his or her library, then puts that card on the top or bottom. A player wins if his or her card had a higher converted mana cost. Whenever a creature with death touch deals damage, okay, well that's just death touch explaining at the end for some reason. Weird. Timber Watch Elf, three drop green. Uh, one two, you can tap it to make target creature get XX until end of turn, where X is the number of elves on the battlefield. That's pretty stupid. Uh, Lol Mage Shepherd, three four drop green, four drop green. Elf Shaman 2 4. Tap 4 untapped creatures you control. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Utility. Uh, Foul Orchard. Enter the battlefield tapped. Green or black. Canopy Tactician. 4 drop green. Elf Warrior. Other elves you control get plus 1 plus 1, so it's a lord, and it taps for 3 green. I don't know what more you could ask for in a lord. Prowess of the Fair, 2 drop black, tribal enchantment elf, which means you can hunt for it with Harbinger. Uh, whenever another non token elf is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may create a 1 1 green elf warrior creature token. The Ozolith, 1 drop legendary artifact. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from the Ozolith onto target creature. That is pretty stupid. 
because that means that if you lose some creatures with one one counters, you can filter them back to, say, Draga, if you've got him. Uh, and that's at the beginning of combat, too. So you can do a bunch of main phase shenanigans to do what you must before the shenanigans really start. Uh, Temple of Melody. Enters the battlefield tapped. Enters battlefield square one. Tap to add green or black. <laughs> kind of tired today. Elvish Mystic. One drop green. Elf Druid. One one. Tap to add green. It's a dork. A basic dork. One of the most basic dorks. Eye Blight's ending. Three drop black. Tribal instant elf. Destroy target non elf creature. I want to say another thing I think is important to note. If I'm not mistaken, I'm going to check myself here before I make a dummy dummy. So, yeah, that's what I thought. Abomination of Land of War states. Power and toughness equal to the number of elves you control, plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. Keep that in mind, because this is an elf tribal it's instant, so that's going to count for Abomination Land of War. So that's that's actually a lot of the reason why I have so many cards that are elf tribal, because if we look back a little bit, we've also got Prowess of the Fair, that's also an elf spell. Um, without actually being a creature. Gillyf Ambush is an elf spell without being a creature. And I think... Oh, Elvish Promenade is another one. Totally forgot about that. This really should be, I think. I Bite Massacre. That should probably be an elf spell. Um, that was the other one I was going to check. So, yeah. Big strategies all around. We always think in... Heritage Druid, one of the most powerful elf spells. Um, this is like Skirk Prospector, but for elves. Um, one drop green, Elf Druid 1-1. One, one. You can tap three untapped elves you control and add three green mana to your mana pool. Immaculate Magistrate, four drop green, Elf Shaman 2-2. Two, two. Tap to put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature for each elf you control nuts. Going back to Heritage Druid just for a second, um, Heritage Druid ability also allows you to tap creatures that just came into the battlefield because you're activating it externally from Heritage Druid's ability rather than from the creature's ability. So it gets around summonings like this. Just something to keep in mind. Because a lot of times you're going to be tapping some really fresh tokens that just came into play. Shamanic Revelation, 5 drop, double green, sorcery, draw a card for each creature you control, and Fawocious, you gain 4 life for each creature you control with power 4 or greater. Once you have enough lords on the field, that might be quite a bit. This one's fucking stupid. It's just so good. Wolverine Riders, 6 drop green. Um, this card is kind of a beefy boy as far as like mana cost. But it's a 4-4. At the beginning of each upkeep, create an elf warrior creature token. Just, just that right there. It just makes an elf every turn. Whenever another elf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to its toughness. <sighs> Card's stupid. It's just stupid. Not in a bad way, but it's stupid. Uh, Jungle Hollow. Enter the battlefield tap. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you gain a life. Tap for green or black. Nadir, Agent of the Duskinal. Six drop black, legendary creature, elf warrior, 3-3. Three, three. Whenever a token you control leaves the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Nadir, Agent of Duskinal. When Nadir enter, leaves the battlefield, uh, create a number of 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens equal to its power. It also has partner, so you can partner it with uh, Jiraga Chieftain if you want. He was revealed a little bit earlier. Um, heroic Intervention. This card is 
a commander staple at this point. Uh, two drop green, instant, permanence you control gain, hexproof and indestructible until on to turn. You know what's funny is that card didn't used to be expensive. When it first released it really wasn't that great. At least people didn't think it was that great. Um, so I got a whole playset. It wasn't even a thing. Uh, four drop green, tribal sorcery, elf. So it's another elf card that isn't an elf card. Put three, one one green elf warrior creature tokens onto the battlefield. Reinforce three. You can pay four, including a green, and discard this card and put three one one counters on target creature. So that could be useful. Put that on Draga. Ooh, this card's a big one. <coughs> Door of Destinies. Four drop artifact. As Door of Destiny enter the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, put a charge counter on Door of Destinies. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destinies. Uh, Pride of the Perfect. Four drop black. Uh, enchantment elves you control get plus two plus zero. So the curve on this foil is fucking dumb. Like I'm really glad I only play casual because this would be. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful fucking foil. Look at that, such color. But that card is curling bad. <laughs> uh, Drug a tree speaker. One drop green, elf druid with a 1-1, one, one. and level up one green. Once it gets to level 1? I really don't understand how level up works, because I would assume that they start at level 1, and then as soon as you level up, they're level 2. But this states level 1 through 4, it has tap to add two green mana. Oh! Wait a minute, I'm, I'm confused here. I'll figure it out later. Anywho, level one through four, add tap to add two green mana. It's on a body of one, two. Once you get to level five plus, elves you can Elf, all elves you control have the same ability, and it's a body of 1-4. I guess I'll have to look into this whole level up thing. I've never actually, like, really messed with level up spells too much. Like, I have them, I just have never really used them. But I feel like, I feel like level 2 should be, like, where it starts. Like, as far as, like, you level up and you're now level 2, right? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Wirewood Symbiote. One drop green, insect, the only non-elf in this deck, um, but it it gets a slot because it's just that good. Uh, one one, return an elf creature you control to its owner's hand. Untap target creature. Activate this ability only once each turn. Doesn't say what speed it's at, so that is an instant speed as far as I'm aware. So you can save an elf just by having Wirewood Symbio on the field. Like you can just. Eh. You wanna murder my Azuri? No, you don't. Azuri's in my hand now. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, when you do that, you untap a target creature. That's that's stupid because honestly, you're trying to untap target creatures. Like that's not a bad thing. That's not a downside. Land of War Elves. You got that full art shit going on here. One drop green. Um, which. Eh, we'll sort that out later. Uh, one one with tap to add one green. Jaspara Sentinel. One drop, one two elf rogue. With reach, very important, very good. Tap. An untapped creature you control, add one mana of any color. So that does mean you have to tap two creatures, so that's kind of shit, but that isn't any color kind of thing, so that's nice. Copper Horn Scout. Very underestimated card. Very underrated card. Uh, Elf Scout 1-1. One, one. Whenever Copper Horn Scout attacks, untap each other creature you control. 
uh, even if this thing only attacks one time in its in its existence before it gets fucking murked, um, that's that's gonna be pretty powerful because what you're gonna do is you're gonna tap all your dorks, get all your mana, you know, tap anything that you need to tap to like generate creatures, one one counters, anything like that, and then swing with Copper Horn Scout during your combat phase and do it all again for main phase two. Um, basically like giving you a second turn as far as like mana generation and shit goes. That doesn't mean you're gonna get it twice like the amount of mana in the same phase because obviously your mana is going to drop uh, between phases but that does mean that if you still have like spells you can cast in your hand you can cast those again, or cast those during your main phase too. Serpent Soul Jar 3 drop black artifact whenever an elf you control dies exile it uh, you can tap this and pay 2 life until end of turn, you may cast a creature spell. You may cast a creature spell from among cards exiled with Serpent Soul Jar. That's a really great way to kind of get some value out of your graveyard or out of beyond library play. Because uh, elves don't really have a whole lot of ways to get shit out of your graveyard, unless you're actually dipping into black, which, I don't know, I don't think elves are at their best when they're dipping into black. Like, dip into black. Dipping into black is fine, but, like, don't, like... I don't feel like an elf deck is really healthy if it's, like... I don't know, like a fair split between the two colors. You want, you want green to always be the prominent color in an elf deck. Herald Unites the Elves, 4 drop, green, black. It's a saga, so phase 1 of the saga is you mill 3 cards, you may put an elf or Tyvar card from your graveyard onto the battlefield. Um, phase 2, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. And phase 3, whenever an elf you control attacks this turn, target creature an opponent controls gets minus 1, minus 1 until end of turn. That's pretty stupid. Um, Rise the Exiled. Uh, three drop green. I will die on this fucking hill. This name is R-H-Y-S. Now, if I was to say the word Y, how is that spelled? W-H-Y, correct? Y. Now, if I was to add an S, on the end of the word Y, it would be Y's, W-H-Y-S. So why is it that everyone pronounces this fucking Reese? There is no E, there is no I, there is no C. There is no reason why this should be pronounced Reese. I don't care if Gavin him fucking self comes on fucking Good Morning Magic tomorrow and says this is pronounced Reese, I'm just gonna settle this fucking debate right now. I don't care. I won't accept it. This is Rise. Rise the Exile. That sounds so much fucking cooler anyways, honestly. But, this is Rise. Phonetic English, Rise. I don't care. Not Reese. Legendary Creature Elf Warrior, 3-2. Whenever Rise the Exiled attacks, you gain one life for each elf you control. Pay a black, sacrifice an elf, regenerate Rise the Exiled and he will rise again. See, the puns are even funner. I'm gonna start a movement, okay? Hashtag rise of rise. Yeah, get it trending. Let's see it. Because fuck people who say reese. That's stupid. It sounds stupid. It's not cool enough. It doesn't make phonetic sense. It's not English. Bad English. Allosaurus Shepherd. One drop green. Elf Shaman. One one. Allosaurus Shepherd cannot be countered. Uh, green spells you control can't be countered. Uh, six, pay six, including two green, until end of turn. Each elf creature you control has base power and toughness 5-5 five, five, and becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other types. Uh, I'm probably not going to use the dinosaur ability on this, honestly. I think that's kind of a goofy, gimmicky kind of thing. Um, but him not being able to be countered is cool, 
And green spells not being able to be countered is cool because I don't like being countered. Counter, being countered sucks. Uh, I hate blue. I hate blue so much. Like, I hate control. I hate blue. Get out of here. Go away. No one wants you in magic. Leave and never come back. Uh, Shaman of the Pack. Three drop, green, black. Um, elf, Shaman, 3-2. When Shaman of the Pack enters the battlefield, uh, target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves you control. Crown of Skempar. Uh, four drop, double green, enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus one for each elf you control and has reach. Three drop green. <laughs> three drop, wow. Pay three, including a green. Return Crown of Skempar from your graveyard to your hand. Very powerful spell. Herald, King of Skemfar, 3 drop, green black, legendary creature, elf warrior, has menace on a body of 3 2. When Herald, King of Skemfar, enters the battlefield, look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may reveal an elf, warrior, or Tyvar card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Priest of Titania, 2 drop, green, elf druid, 1 1. Add green to your mana pool for each elf on the battlefield. <clears throat> That's a tap ability. Uh, core Calling. We have a 3 drop green with X at uh, instant speed. Convoke. Search your library for a creature card with convert a mana cost X or less and put it on the battlefield. Shelf your library. That's mostly just instant speed shenanigans right there. That really, really is. Um, Elderfang Venom. It's a 4 drop, green black enchantment. Attacking elves you control have death touch. Whenever an elf you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. More punishment for killing your elves. And finally, we have Pact of the Serpent. 3 drop, 2, gr two black. Sorcery, choose creature type, target player draws X cards and you lose. <coughs> Target player draws X cards and loses X life, where X is the number of creatures they control of that chosen type. That could be powerful if someone else is playing a tribal deck and you just want to do damage to them, but you're mostly going to use this to draw out a bunch of your fucking cards in your deck. Because, here's the thing, if you use this, right, if you use this and you hit um, Wellwisher, you can get all that life back. If you use that and you hit, like, a bunch of other cards, like Rise or, uh, I think Dwinin also does life. Anywho, you can get life back pretty easily in an elf deck for doing elf things. But more importantly, um, you get cards, so you're probably just going to win the game. As long as you don't kill yourself with that spell. So please don't kill yourself with that spell. Go ahead and just do yourself a favor and count how many L's you have before you freaking cast it. Ugh. Alright, well, that does it for this video. This one got a lot longer than the other ones did, but that's because I had a lot more to say about elves. I'm pretty passionate about elves. Um, elves was a deck I was actually playing competitively in modern before you know we got to this covid can pandemic commander <laughs> state of magic that we're in right now um also to clarify when i say competitive i mean like as competitive as i can game like i haven't been to a gp or a pro tour or anything like that i'm not i'm not actually good at this game um but anywho rise Hashtag rise up rise. Get it trending. Uh, that would actually be so fucking cool if I got this going. Uh, see you tomorrow. Um, we've got two more decks. And I'm actually hoping that if I get it all in quick enough, I'm actually building a deck that I think I would actually slot in as my new number one. So, yeah. Anywho. 
Uh, that's the video for today. Check back tomorrow. Peace.